research for the Bashar STA. Um, a, a, an interesting paper I found is by E.E. E. Richards uh, called The Earth Power Spectrum and Its Potential as a Usable Energy Source. You can find it, uh, just Google search for it. Um, but this paper talks about uh, different frequencies uh, explored by different inventors over, over time. Uh, te Tesla was kind of in the 40, 40 kilohertz to 200 kilohertz range. This is 100 years ago. Hubbard uh, had these 1200 feet uh, wires, uh, four of them each of the compass directions. This is sort of around, uh, if you think of 1200 feet as uh, a quarter wave, this is around 200 kilohertz. Hans uh, Kohler was around 180 kilohertz. Stan Deo, in a, in a book called The Cosmic Conspiracy, in chapter 4, mentions 14.3 uh, kilohertz as being important. Uh, so the, the conclusion is we want to make a device that can sort of um, pick up the energy in the 14.3 to 250 kilohertz range. This is where lightning strikes happen. This is where uh, solar events, uh, like solar flares and other uh, solar events, impact the Earth and induce a lot of energy in our in our magnetic field and ionosphere and so forth. So this is the, the range of frequencies we want to be in. So this conclusion is uh, making me um, consider going to a full-scale STA um, because what we're after is a larger inductance so that we can get down to those lower frequencies. We want low resistance um, because um, we want it to resonate longer each time it receives a ping from the environment. Uh, and that translates to larger gauge wire. Um, and we want to do this at room temperature. We're not using anything esoteric like uh, superconductivity. Um, we want it to be an air coil. So uh, achieving large inductance means that it has to be physically large um, because we're not putting any ferromagnetic material in the core. Um, now, Bashar has the requirement that it fit under a 3-foot tetrahedron, 3 feet in height, that's 91.4 centimeters for you metric people. Um, and I find it amusing that this requirement is given uh, in the sense of being a trig problem, rather than just giving us the dimensions straight out. So, assuming I did the math correctly, um, the diameter I come up with is 14.37 inches, 36.5 centimeters. The height is uh, 24.26 inches, 61.6 .6 centimeters. The tetrahedron is 36 inches, 91.4 centimeters. The side is 44 inches, 111.8 centimeters. Um, so the height, height of the cone is um, 14.37, that's greater than a foot. Oh, I'm sorry, the height is 24.26 inches, greater than two feet, and the diameter is 14.37 inches. Hi, so um, in kind of a Richard Dreyfus mashed potato mountain moment this weekend, I built this thing. It took me uh, about a day and a half to almost two days, most of the time wiring. Uh, so you can see that this Basher STA is quite large. Uh, um, my room is kind of small, so I can't back up uh, too well. Um, I have two coils, uh, yin and yang. Uh, the black one is the full cone-shaped uh, coil, and the white one is cut in half, and then there's the other section in here uh, with a wire that pokes through to to establish the connection from the outer white one to the inner white one. Um, my tabletop is about 33 inches above the ground. The coil um, is right up to my chin. <laughs> I'm about 5 foot 10, so this thing is gigantic. Um, so let me uh, go over some uh, notes on the construction technique. Uh, some of the parts you would need if you want to replicate this. Um, you would need four 22 by 8, a uh, 22 inch by 28 poster boards. Um, two of them are taped together so that you can cut a very large uh, 102 degree uh, cone shaped template. Um, when you tape this together, uh, it's kind of flimsy, but when you, as you wrap the wire around it, um, 
the cone uh, snaps into a more rigid form. Um, so what I recommend is you stuff uh, clothing like a uh, um, material and shirts and pants and things into it to make it rigid while you're putting the wire on. Then you can take that stuff out because the wire will hold it rigid. Um, I used uh, shipping tape. I used scotch tape. I decided to just make my life easy and just scotch tape each wire loop as I went around. So there's eight pieces of tape each each loop. So it was quite a bit of taping, but um, this was the easiest way to connect it. Now, um, now people don't us usually use scotch tape when they're making uh, coils for uh, radio, but this is such a large inductance coil that the capacitance from a, from the tape is neg is negligible. Uh, you might need some clip leads. Uh, it's a convenient way to make the connections of the wires. You could solder them onto the wires of the co uh, coil. And uh, here's the expensive part. I used um, two 500 foot spools of 14 gauge wire. Um, and it cost me about a hundred bucks USD. So, um, so much for being a free energy device. <laughs> it's expensive. Uh, you can buy a solar panel like a 15 watt solar panel for less than that and be done with be done with it but you know this is science so let's just you know experiment here some of the tools you might need are a 36 inch yardstick which is useful a protractor to measure this 102 degree thing um, scissors wire cutters um, I use uh, two lazy Susans one to hold the spool and one to put the, co uh, the cone shaped coil on and uh, if you're careful to uh, make the wire go onto the cone with the same uh, turn angle that the um, spool has, uh, then you don't have to bend the wire each time. Makes life much easier. You might need a knife. Um, so two Lazy Susans. You might want to get really big uh, diameter Lazy Susans, ones to match the diameter of the coil. I noticed some ham radio uh, website uh, picked up some of the videos I've been making on this Basher STA, and that's great. I'm hoping uh, some of the hobbyists that know all about radio um, will attempt to replicate this, because uh, not only might this thing be a useful uh, antenna for ULF and long wave reception, uh, you know, it's basically an antenna research project uh, beyond just the free energy uh, experimentation. Um, so here's some uh, specs that I used. Uh, I used a wire gauge of 14 AWG. That's an American gauge. Um, for you people in Europe, uh, you're looking for a wire that has a diameter of about 1.628 millimeters and uh, 8.236 ohms per kilometer. So we're looking for basically low resistance um, wire um, and you can even go thicker here. Some people are using copper tubing um, and going really thick uh, and that might mean that you would change the geometry to be even bigger. Um, the number of turns that I wrapped was approximately 180 per coil. Uh, the black coil actually ended up with more. Um, I made a mistake when I bought the two spools of wire. Uh, the black wire is actually solid copper, rigid, highly bendable. The white coil has stranded copper wire. Same gauge, but uh, two different styles of wire. And I found that the stranded wire was really easy to put onto the paper form, so I would recommend stranded wire. However, the solid copper wire offers a benefit of being uh, a little bit more massive maybe uh, very rigid the cone the cone is held very rigidly onto it it makes a much more solid structure this one's more flimsy um, so that happy mistake allowed me to sort of uh, see the differences between those two types of wires but if you want to make your life easy go for the stranded wire uh, the calculated in I found a formula for cone shaped coils and calculated these dimensions in and I ended up with a number approximately 1.8 millihenries. I have a very crude way of measuring inductance using a kit that I bought and I don't know how reliable it is but I was getting a number, a measured inductance after I made these coils of somewhere between 2.4 and 2.9 millihenries, which might point to the fact that the formula for a cone-shaped coil 
uh, breaks down after you get to a certain size and maybe uh, and this is not with the coils arranged penetrating They're, this is just coils by themselves as a, as a separate cone shaped coil the the inductance was measured like this so maybe the the formula for a cone shaped coil changes as the cone gets larger um, which is fascinating maybe the inductance is larger than you think it is uh, the resistance in the wire that I measured turned out to be uh, 1.1 ohms or maybe a little bit less because I had I had a clip lead and and uh, the long leads from the from the ohmmeter um, so using using the uh, the wire gauge ohmage number that translates to about 436 feet of wire I don't think I used that much wire I think I probably used around 370 feet of wire per per cone. An individual on YouTube point, pointed me to the work of Walter and Lau Russell. Um, they also were playing with cone-shaped coils and got some results. You might investigate them. Um, I don't know too much about uh, Walter Russell and his work, um, but he does seem to have an interesting periodic table that he invented. Uh, then another person uh, at Energetic Forum pointed, uh, to, pointed us to the cross-field antenna, which is another thing that people are experimenting with, which is an inverted cone-shaped coil uh, antenna, very, very large, but one-fiftieth the size of the wavelength. So um, ra some radio folks are really interested in this antenna and whether or not it performs.